What's going on guys, it's Rage, and welcome back to some more Season 3 of Modern Warfare 3. In the recent video for the start of Season 3, we covered the moors and a couple of sniper changes that came to the game. And now if you guys saw that video, that video was like 15 minutes long, and there was actually more that I had meant to add into the video that I had cut, so I wasn't yapping so much in that video. Along with the addition of the moors, we saw a couple of nerfs again to here with the XRK Stalker, as well as the SPX-80. But there was actually a pretty significant sniper buff that I wanted to go ahead and cover here at the start of the video, and it's specifically with the heavy bolt attachments on a lot of the snipers. I'll go ahead and put the video up on screen for you guys now. Sledgehammer had tweeted this showing off a heavy bolt change they brought to the game where if you run the specific heavy bolt attachment for whatever sniper it may be, your centering is going to be a lot more centered. Because up until this point in time, the way that sniping has worked in this game and like the way that it all centers is that it's a lot like Black Ops 1 sniping where it's not exactly centered and that's kind of to like balance slash nerf the snipers depending on how you look at it. Although I feel like we can mostly assume it is a little bit of a nerf to quick scoping, but we get that. It's not gonna stop us. I think it was also at the start of season two or just around the season two point in time where they had brought in more adjustments to just how centering is in the game. There's no longer that random sway. The reason why they didn't add it to the snipers is because they didn't want it to be too overpowered in that regard, so I get it. But I do think that that adjustment with the heavy bolt is really nice. I think that this is gonna be great for something like Warzone even. Now also within that same video, Sledgehammer showed off a really huge buff to the Modern Warfare 22 weapons that they've been needing for a very long time. They fixed slash reduced a lot of the visual recoil that came with Modern Warfare 22 weapons. All the smoke and dust that gets kicked out of those weapons. It's another one of those things that we had talked about a lot with Modern Warfare 22. Like, there is just too much going on here. So again, with Modern Warfare 22 weapons, there's now just a lot less visual effects going on. You can actually stay on target, see what you're shooting at, which is huge for mouse and keyboard players. So seriously, thank you, Sledgehammer. It's a very serious question, again, just kind of like going off the rumors that we heard that Sledgehammer has had to go to Infinity War to get the okay on a lot of decisions that get made with this game. If that is still true, that Sledge is having to go to IW to get the okay to change these kind of things, then why again didn't Infinity War just do that throughout the course of Modern Warfare 22? I really can't stress it enough, like this is actually a huge change for Modern Warfare 22 weapons. It's really nice. What I wanted to do here for this video is go ahead and try that out. I want to go ahead and take the quick bolt off of the moors and just try it on a couple of different snipers, see how it really feels. Still with the way that mag holster works on the moors, I don't know if having the heavy bolt on is going to really slow it down that much, but we'll see. Also, I wanted to go ahead and mention this right here at the start of the video. There is a free trial going on for Modern Warfare 3 right now. I believe it's running through April 8th, like 1 p.m. Eastern on Monday, April 8th. If you've been hesitant or waiting for a time to check out Modern Warfare 3 while it's free, now is the perfect time, especially with this season. Great time. Again, with the heavy bolt on, looking where that center dot is, that's exactly where your shot is going to go right away. Aim in right away, that's where your crosshair is. Very great change, honestly. But again, I see why they didn't do that for the light bolts. I get it. You don't want to make the snipers too fast, too quick. I, I get it. It's like Black Ops 1 all over again. Now, also, this is something that I wanted to bring some attention to. Charlie Intel tweeted this out the other day saying that Sledgehammer Games has hinted during a creator call this week that they are working on bonus mastery rewards for those who have earned mastery camos in both multiplayer and modern warfare zombies. No updates on what the rewards are or when this will release yet. I'm really glad that Charlie brought that up and brought some more attention to it because there may or may not have been a certain somebody within those creator calls that brought that up to them. There may or may not be a certain dork in that creator call that has gotten grand mastery in both modern warfare 22 and 23 and wants his rewards for it. Me personally, the main thing that I want as of right now is just the new Modern Warfare 3 Grand Mastery title card and emblem. That's the main thing that I want right now. But I mean, if there's more rewards coming for doing all of these specific mastery rewards, I'm all on board for that. It incentivizes people to do it. It still depends how good the rewards are, of course. But I mean, for me, I'm just going to do it anyway, because, you know, completionist. Now, again, specifically with what Charlie was tweeting, talking about the camos only, not exactly Grand Mastery rewards. So if you are someone like me who's also completed Grand Mastery, then I don't really know what's in store for us yet. Yet. But assuming the main focus for right now is just on the uh, camo rewards. I think what they're working on mostly is having like more mastery rewards for those who completed everything like Orion, Bioluminescent, Borealis, Interstellar. If there's a reward for getting all four of those, then I would hope, hope slash assume there's going to be something for Grand Mastery, but I already talked about this a lot in my Modern Warfare 22 review. It's kind of like why put in the effort for only like a percent of the player base that does like 0.0001% of the player base that actually does the Grand Mastery challenge. And yeah, um, I'm really feeling the slowness on the heavy bolt. I'm, I'm way too used to the quick bolt. I mean, it is really nice. So, I mean, that initial accuracy right there is beast. But uh, speed, on the other hand, is a little crucial. Yeah, not this I mean, with mag holster, it's still not that bad. And the centering is really nice. Oh. 
I, oh, what is that Mortal Kombat finisher? What? I feel like I just got frozen in fatality by Sub-Zero. Hello? Obviously, what'll still definitely help at least a little bit is if you shoot and reload at the same time. Like, the, the timing of it isn't that bad. I don't think you'll be able to stack with it. If you're someone like me who likes to go for sniping clips all the time and things like that, probably not the most ideal thing, but if you're someone who's more of a passive sniper, this is kind of nice. I feel like in a weird sense, almost, it's kind of like the old uh, sleight of hand pro versus marathon days back in MW2. Sleight of hand pro using a quick bolt or something like uh, marathon. That's a little bit slower, but you have much better control and initial accuracy. Oh, I can't see a thing. That's right, I got rid of Tack Mask for Mag Holster. It's like one of those trade-offs that I consistently... All right, so we're just out here doing that again. It's one of those trade-offs that I consistently find myself changing. If I run Mag Holster, am I gonna run Flak Jacket or am I gonna run Tack Mask? And I always put on the wrong one in the wrong situation. I mean, I know a lot of the time it really doesn't seem like Tack Mask does much of anything, which I still feel like it needs to be on that, like, Black Ops 2 level of Tack Mask. It's still better than nothing, in my opinion. I was really hoping for the drop down. There was people in the tunnel. I knew it. I was hoping for the flank drop down, hit a triple, hit a quad, something like that. Definitely don't mind the feel of the heavy bolt. I'm just not used to it. Oh, also, this is another thing. You have the option to now stay in the lobby. I think it was something that they added in later on into the Modern Warfare 22 life cycle, like season four or five, somewhere around there. They started giving parties the option to stay in the game. And this was something that I believe Sledgehammer talked about even before this game came out or around the launch window, that they were looking into experimenting with this kind of thing and keeping people in the same lobby. But what I feel like would work even better for the experimentation is just keep people in the lobbies regardless. Like, don't give people the option. Like, just keep non-disbanding lobbies in the game for a little bit and see what happens. Don't have us opt into it. Just have it be that way. Because going back to that feeling again of having the non-disbanding lobbies, like you only leave the lobby when you want to, it would be a really, really nice feeling to have again in Call of Duty. Because even with skill-based matchmaking, there are still a decent amount of lobbies here and there where I'll get into a really good game and then I just know the next one's going to suck. Just keep me in the good lobby, please. <laughs> I do appreciate the transparency on the matter. It's just, why not just force the staying lobbies together? I'd say now would even be a really good time to try it out as well, considering that it's a free-to-play weekend, so, you know, why not? No way! What? I was thinking it in the back of my mind, like, you know what? Do I go for the wall bang? I go for the wall bang. Oh my god. Things like that, man, I'll never get tired of. Old school MW2 things in the new Modern Warfare 3. Honestly, the more that I've been using this heavy bolt throughout the course of these games is like, I'm, I'm getting used to it. I'm not really opposed to it because I'm already someone who likes using slower bolts a little bit. Or at least in more of the recent Call of Duties, I've always preferred those kind of things. Things like the intervention in these two Modern Warfares, 3 Line and Vanguard, Tundra and Cold War, the AX-50 and HDR in Modern Warfare, like, I've always preferred these. I still love using the faster ones, or at least ones that you can make fast. Especially going back to, like, the old school intervention and MSR, M40, things like that. The more that I use this, the more that I realize, at a certain point in time, again, I won't be entirely surprised if Sledge does end up nerfing the Moors. Do I want them to? No, because, of course, I enjoy using it. But I'm not trying to, like, speak a nerf into existence, but I'm not completely blind to what we have. But also, at the same time, I feel like I'm just used to uh, snipers getting nerfed in Call of Duty, so <laughs> I'm just letting the previous experiences speak for themselves, predict the future. But also, now that I think about it, we've had something like the longbow here in this game all year. But maybe it'll turn into a situation like the longbow, where throughout the rest of the year, we might see some just uh, adjustments to the more, see how it goes. New tweet from Charlie Intel. Activision confirms in a statement to Forbes that Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone player count is now higher than what it was last year at this point. We're having a blast supporting the community across Call of Duty. The teams have had fun connecting with our players and creating high quality new experiences for them. Player engagement is up with more players playing now than this time last year. All thanks to Sledge, their community engagement and post-launch support has been unmatched. Weapon conversion kits and weekly events are with actual good rewards alone make it worth coming back to play, literally. Been saying, man, the content and the post-launch support for this game has been phenomenal, especially here with Season 3, six new maps alone. Already covered it previously, but this season has had more content going for it than any post-launch season in the Warzone era. So yeah, with that all being said, that's gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Just again, wanted to sit down and cover a few more things that I didn't get to within the previous video with Season 3. Maybe also going to try and get more of a feel with the Moore's Heavy Bolt because I have a sneaking suspicion. I don't want it to, but I have a sneaking suspicion that we are going to get some sort of nerf to the Moors at some point in time. Something somewhere is going to give, and I know everyone's going to have a heart attack over it, but we'll see how it goes. I'm just enjoying it for what it's worth right now. Again, though, thank you all so much for checking out this video. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. It's been Rage, and I will talk to you guys later. Take care, everybody.